Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara, and this is the first episode of 2024. We are glad to be back after a mini break. <laughs> and today we are starting <laughs> our new year with a graphic audiobook. We'll be sharing our experience and our thoughts on the graphic audiobook as well as the story itself. If you'd like to see this in video format, please head over to Patreon. You get to watch us see our pretty faces without commercials. We also have an after show available for you following this episode where we give you a peek behind the scenes as we sort out our next book chat read. This is also now available on the Spreaker app. If you are listening on Spreaker and you'd like the audio only version of the after show, it's available for you if you sign up as a supporter. Again, this is audio only. So if you still prefer the videos of things like reading vlogs and other things where you have to see it, you should still head on over to Patreon. You can also join me and my two co-hosts over on the Book Clubs app for even more book chats. Please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here for new year, new books. Yes. Yay! <laughs> yes, I'm glad you're here <laughs> and bearing with me on this tongue stuttering situation <laughs> I've got going on today. It's okay. Oh my it's- gosh. <laughs> It feels like a Monday. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Tell everyone where they can find you online. You can find me on Facebook at Heartful of Ink, on Instagram at KC underscore Heartful of Ink, or on my website, heartfulofink.com. All right. So before we begin, of course, we'd like to remind you, as always with book chats, we talk full spoilers. So you've been warned. Yes. Spoiler alert. All right, so let's jump into things, shall we? Here are the stats and the synopsis, and then we'll just jump right on in. Today, we are discussing Clean Sweep, written by Alona Andrews, the first book in the Innkeeper's Chronicle. The graphic audio was published January 7, 2022 by graphicaudio.net. It should be noted that the source material was published over 10 years ago in December 2013. The runtime is six hours. It features a huge (laughs) cast, including the main character narrator, who is Nora Archerati as Dina DeMille. She is the director and also credited in the adaptation of the book for graphic audio. The top narrators are also Ryan H. Reed as Sean Evans and Alex Hill Knight as Arland. Casey, would you kindly read the synopsis? On the outside, Dina DeMille is the epitome of normal. She runs a quaint Victorian bed and breakfast in a small Texas town, owns a shih tzu named Beast, and has a perfect neighbor whose biggest problem should be what to serve her guests for breakfast. But Dina is different. Her broom is a deadly weapon. Her inn is is magic and thinks for itself. Meant to be a lodging for otherworldly visitors, the only permanent guest is a retired galactic aristocrat who can't leave the grounds because she's responsible for the deaths of millions and someone might shoot her on sight. Under the circumstances, normal is a little bit of a stretch for Dina. And now something with wicked claws and deep water teeth has begun to hunt at night. Feeling responsible for her neighbors, Dina decides to get involved. Before long, she has to juggle dealing with the annoyingly attractive ex-military new neighbor, Sean Evans, an alpha strain werewolf, and the equally arresting cosmic vampire soldier, Arland, while trying to keep her in and its guests safe. But the enemy she's facing is unlike anything she's ever encountered before. It's smart, vicious, and lethal, and putting herself between this creature and her neighbors might just cost her everything. So, um, (laughs) okay, so let me just say, before we even go Mm -hmm. too far, if you don't know what a graphic audio is, it's essentially an audio book that is in the format of an audio production slash drama. So imagine a movie for your ears with music, sound effects, many actors, etc. Versus an audio book that usually has like one to three narrators and sometimes Mm -hmm. they're voice actors, but they're reading the book without any extras. Yes, this has all the extras, all the toppings, all the things. And just like a movie with a director and a producer, they make choices (laughs) how they want (laughs) to present the book, right? Yes. So it is a piece of, I guess, art (laughs) of someone's book. All right. So let's talk about why we picked this book just for a moment. Casey, 
So I Why picked this, this book. book? <laughs> because I love Alona Andrews. And I will give a little backstory on this book. So back in, I think it was like 2012, actually, they started writing this book on their blog. And so they would just write a chapter and post it on their blog. And they were like, this is just for free. This is just for fun. This is what we're doing in between different books that we're contracted for. And they never expected to do much with it. They were just like, we'll post it on the blog. People can read it if they want it. And you can tell. Mm-hmm. You, you can That's tell. I'll say it. It sounds like a fun, it reads like a fun project. Yes, yes. Um, mm-hmm. But I love them as authors. I really enjoy their world building. So I was like, let's do this. Let's stick with Alone Andrews for my first graphic novel. For me, mm-hmm. I dived into this without reading the synopsis. I didn't even bother because, you mm-hmm. know, I too enjoy Alona Andrews' work. Yes. We both enjoy them. We've read things by them mm-hmm. and had a good time with it. So I was kind of like, okay. Even though I was judging the book by the cover, <laughs> I did not like the cover art. Yeah. And I was kind of confused what I was going to be getting, but still, I did not read the synopsis. <laughs> so it was a surprise to me. <laughs> and a good surprise or a bad surprise? Su- surprise. No, not, not the best kind of surprise. I'm not, go- I'm not going to lie. Not the best. Um, not the worst, but definitely not the best. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And so I really avoided even reaching out to you after I, I, I did once, but then I was like, I'm not going to keep doing this because I could have easily texted you seven different times <laughs> like WTF, man. <laughs> but I didn't want to show my hand. Yeah, it's OK. <laughs> Tell okay. me everything now. Tell me everything now. And I will. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> okay, so before we dive into the guts of it, as we do, high level, when you finished the graphic audio, what did you think? Um, I am interested. It's not the best story they've ever written. They have definitely evolved and grown over the years, and you can absolutely tell. The graphic audio itself, I didn't hate it, but I don't love it. Okay. So I'm I'm so, interested in the story, but the graphic audio I'm kind of meh about. Okay. So two things. So first when when I ended it, I thought, okay, I'm happy that's done. We're done. <laughs> oh, no. We're done. So also, I also thought I should have picked it. I should have picked it and not let Casey pick it. <laughs> Only because I am familiar with graphic mm-hmm. audio and I could tell from the beginning. I wouldn't like the way they present the audio and I've heard much better. Okay. And I feel like this was a poor pick for your first time because just like I said earlier, Mm -hmm. just like movies, some movies are done really well Mm -hmm. and some aren't. Yeah. Yeah. No, there were, there are a few spots where I was like, I don't know what I'm listening to right now. I know. So I hope that this, because you're not by nature an audiobook listener to not begin really. with. Yeah. So I knew this would be a different experience for you, but I hoped that this wouldn't scare you off because this is not a good pick for a graphic I, audio, I in you. my opinion. Yes. <laughs> you, you are the expert. I just picked it because it was Alona Andrews. I knew yeah. we had read them on the podcast in the past. I had high hopes for the story. It did not meet expectations, but I'm not completely turned off. Okay. I, I will let you That's pick the good. next one and trust okay, that so it will be better. Okay, so you're open to doing one more. Yes. 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 But, but you get to pick it this time. <laughs> okay. Because I'm like, Lord, have mercy on all of us. Because to me, and I know, y'all know me. Y'all know I am a hard reader. I am Mm -hmm. by nature. I am a critical listener and Mm -hmm. reader. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot of issues with this. And afterwards, I did some looking at other negative reviews. And the the people who don't like it had some of the same problems that I did. So I didn't feel alone. Mm -hmm. And I felt that so all the positive reviews, no shade if you liked it, but you're kind of fangirling. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because let's keep it real. Like if you look at okay, so first right off, right off, let's break I wanna kind of split the audio mm-hmm. 
separate from the plot. Yes. Because I have issues okay. with the plot and issues with the audio. Yes. So right off, like within the first 20 minutes, I'm like, what's with this random ass music in the background? Like the music didn't feel like it fit the tone of what Mm-mm. the characters were saying. Mm-mm. So the I'm music like, was always I, really weird and never fit. No. So I, I was very thrown by that and it really messed with the pacing and mm-hmm. it t- pulled me out of what was happening. Yes. So that's one of my big issues with the audio itself is like the random music. It just mm-hmm. didn't fit. It didn't work for me. And I did not like I'm sorry. I did not like the the main character Dina's narrator. Oh, yeah, I did no, not she was annoying. like her at all. I her southern twang was aggravating, yep. and I could not tell if she was supposed to be like this southern belle type girl. But she's an alien. She's not even like it's she's weird. Technically it's, human, but. Yeah, no, it was really, okay, really so that's southern. Another... Yeah, no, that that was a whole. Other th- she grew up in Georgia, so yes. yes, the Georgia Southern accent is very different from the Texas Southern accent, and she had a very yes. Texas Southern accent, even though she's only been there like a year or two. So I'm like, why do you sound Texan when you've been in Georgia, but also you've been around space forever? So. I don't know. I feel like she should sound more worldly and yes. less like someone from the country who's never been anywhere. Yeah, um, no, that, that's exactly what she sounded like. And it did not make sense. And I did not like that either. No. So narrator choices weren't the best for Dina. The The guys, no. I guess, were fine. They were fine. As I, I will said. say... As as my first graphic audio, I really appreciated the fact that there were actual, like, male narrators, because I'm so used to every once in a while, you know, I just listen and it's one person doing every voice, mm-hmm. and when the women try to do the men, it's weird. So I was like, all right, mm-hmm. I can appreciate, you know, different people voicing different characters. I like that. So again, that's why I'm mm-hmm. going to, I'm going to trust you and do another one in the future. <laughs> But like, yeah, that's kind of that like the best part for me, just because it was new and different. Yeah, so. definitely. I like that too. Yeah, if, if that Dina woman had been doing every voice, I would have quit. I would have actually been like, "I'm sorry, I'm done." It's funny because somebody said that they actually preferred the regular audiobook with one woman reading everything, but I feel like her voice must have been different I in the audiobook. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was a different narrator. I might listen to a sample of that just to see who she is and if she sounds so Texan. Like, it it was... Mm -hmm. As somebody who's lived in the South my entire life, it was really fucking annoying. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it definitely was. So that really also pulled me out of it. Mm -hmm. And I honestly found myself really getting bored with it. I was so bored with it. So I'd start... I'm listening. I'm like, ugh. So I turn it off. I'll come back later. I'll listen a little more. Ugh. I'll just give myself a break until tomorrow. Oh, no. The next day comes and goes. It's in the evening. I'm like, shit. I guess I should listen to this graphic audio some more. So I listen some more. <laughs> At least I fall it's asleep. kind of short w- and only like six hours. <laughs> Especially if you speed it up. Yes, I did speed it up to 1.5, which helped. Okay, good. But to me, it was almost unbearable. Oh, if God. I weren't doing this for the podcast, after the first 30 minutes, I would have quit it. And I was kind of mad at myself that I bought this. Oh, no. So, and the thing was, what made me mad was, I actually, when I went on to Scribd, which is where I have a subscription, if Mm -hmm. you don't know about Scribd, um, shameless plug, (laughs) (laughs) you can get unlimited books and audiobooks, ebooks, and all of that for one monthly price. I looked later, and it was on there. I'm like, mother, I could have just listened as a part of my subscription instead of paying for it. So I was really PO'd. To say the least, I was really annoyed that I spent like fifteen or sixteen dollars oh, on this thing. No, it was I so found expensive. this on Hoopla with my library card. I swear to God, I was so pissed. But I'm like, okay, I just like threw fifteen dollars down the toilet. It's fine. 
But anyone who's interested in uh, script, it's actually been re uh, renamed. It's called Everand, I think. Ooh, yeah, Everand. Okay. There's a link in the show notes if you want to check it out. You can get 60 days free. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, when it came to the graphic audio itself as a piece of work, I didn't really enjoy it that they much. They made some weird choices. And you, yeah. you mentioned, you know, the first 30 minutes. Around that time, uh, friggin' Sean Evans is running around peeing on everything because he's a werewolf. And they had water sounds while he was peeing. Yes, yes. And I literally, I was like, did I leave my sink on? And I want to go turn <laughs> off my water. Sound like a like, faucet. No, no, it's not me. It's him peeing on this fucking audio book. Like, yeah. what? what? Not cute. Not cute. Not cute. Not Mm-mm. interesting. Not a sound I wanted to hear. No, and honestly, Sean did not come across as, and I don't know if this has to do with the performance or with the character, but I'm like, ugh, all these dudes, ugh, ugh. I didn't feel like any kind of nothing yeah. about nothing about any of these guys, either one, the vampire or the werewolf. I felt a little bad for Sean just because he is alien and his parents lied to him and then he had had that phone call with them and he's like you lied to me but oh i'm a grown God. ass man <laughs> that phone call it was like we were overhearing his yeah. private phone call yeah that was and i did feel a little bit i was like damn but i'm like damn <laughs> did it just sit there listening to his phone call oh my god <laughs> i don't know like so some parts there were mm-hmm. some parts that were like kind of more interesting but mm-hmm. there weren't enough to sustain me for the entirety of this no experience it definitely feels like an early draft of a project that somebody has started Mm -hmm. they have a good idea they kind of know what beats to hit for the beat sheet but it's not really fleshed out it's kind Mm -hmm. of coherent but they they really needed to just like get a developmental editor and really flesh it out and really put a lot more into it and mm-hmm. um i think i heard typos but i couldn't be sure if it was the audiobook or actual typos and i'm kind of scared to go check there are a few typos on the the blurb though so <laughs> maybe like it it didn't feel like this got any editing it really feels like they just put it on the blog and then put it together and 10 years later it became an audiobook and really like before it became an audiobook they should have fleshed it out a little bit or done a little bit more to it yeah i mean because as a person like i feel like any good fiction i should be able to just start reading it without reading the synopsis and be able to grasp what's going on so if i want to let's i kind of want to switch gears to talk Mm -hmm. about the book itself and the plot and stuff like the first maybe 45 minutes i'm like what the fuck is going on and then like different things i'm like wait is this sci-fi i'm like is this about space i'm like (laughs) what is happening i'm like is this fantasy or sci-fi and then it's like at first i couldn't tell i couldn't exactly and i'm like well it's both but i didn't figure that out at first and she's talking about like spaceships and then her crazy ass dog with four rows of teeth and i'm like (laughs) okay i mean i really was confused with what was happening and i'm Mm -hmm. like what is this what is she what is the innkeeper and then suddenly we get the info dump for sean because he knew nothing Mm -hmm. so the authors gave all the information we need in the world as Mm -hmm. teaching sean because he doesn't know Anything. anything But that took too long. I was very, I was flailing around for a bit. Like, what is this? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, at first I couldn't even tell. I'm like, what year is this supposed to be? Like in a minute, I felt like it was supposed like, now again, that was me making an assumption from the Mm -hmm. cover art. I'm like, I thought it was supposed to be like old fashioned or something. And I'm like, wait, it's very futuristic. I'm like, wait, no, (laughs) it's not really. But I was just all over the place Mm -hmm. and I didn't like that feeling. Mm hmm. Yeah, they needed a good editor on this. And again, like it feels like a first draft and I'm interested enough in the story. Like overall, I thought it was an interesting take, right? Like when mm-hmm. they were explaining vampires and how these vampires are the different planet. I thought that was really interesting and fascinating. 
-hmm. because vampires are so overdone and everybody's doing vampires and it's always so standard but they're like no we can't kill you if you're in prayer because then we have to like do all this other stuff so that's why your cross works it's not really anyway <laughs> like i i thought it was interesting <laughs> but it definitely needed to be fleshed out a lot more yeah it definitely reads like dare i say like fan fiction like someone who knows something that they like and they're just tossing shit together from other things mm -hmm. and you know like the quality of fan fiction because most fan fiction writers aren't professional writers they there just are some write really what they good like fan fiction authors out there i need to defend them for a i'm sec. not there talking are, about there are some. okay <laughs> note this i'm not saying all yes. fan fiction yes. but a lot of fan fiction just seems like joe schmo picked up a pen and mm -hmm. wanted to write their favorite story mm -hmm. and that's what this sounds like to yes. me yes Yes. No, so, they have definitely grown as authors, and we definitely have seen that when we read um, the Nevada series. Like, that is... Which I really love. Miles and miles and miles beyond this, because they have an editor, and they go through rounds of revisions, and that's just a shameless plug for me. <laughs> but anyway... Mm -hmm. I'm I'm interested enough. Like it's Alona Andrews, so I am definitely giving them a lot of leeway. Whereas if this was a new author to me, I'd be like, eh, no, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not giving them that leeway. I feel like I like that, and I'm the kind of person where I like what I like and I don't what I don't, and I don't mm -hmm. care if it happens to be the same author. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, that's yes, a good thing. I to, really that's love a good quality to have. Yeah, like I love the Nevada series. Like mm -hmm. I liked all those books pretty much. There might have been one or two that didn't hit just right, but I liked them all in general. Mm -hmm. But this I didn't. I didn't really like much about it at all. Um, and I won't be continuing. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know. I just say it plainly. Like, honestly, I can't even pretend like I gave them extra points because I was just so, again, the only word that comes to mind is bored. I was bored. Even when some of the stuff was supposed to be comical, like some things were kind of funny. Also, that's another thing. I don't really necessarily like a lot of comedy mm -hmm. with my dark was supposed to feel like dark something dark and yeah. scary but it's comedy i don't really go for that but like for example i feel like maybe the beats were off for me or something mm -hmm. because like when i think of mercy thompson there are comical beats in there mm -hmm. but it doesn't hit like in an awkward way like this one did i'm like okay and again maybe it was also the music and the sound effects making it awkward even more awkward than it would be oh on yeah the page. No, that, that was definitely awkward even the scene where dina is in the costco of all places this costco trip <laughs> was like some okay so she's in costco one of the little scary things pops up and she's like she and this random customer mm -hmm. beat it down and then when the customer goes away to get help she's like i gotta bury this thing and i could just in my mind how the the, the sounds were going i can just imagine dina sitting there shaking oh like shaking <laughs> to try to get the building to swallow it ah! i mean to me i was laughing i was freaking laughing i'm like i'm sure this is not supposed to be funny but she's like no nah, i just have to close it ah! i felt like <laughs> I'm like, oh God. I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Honestly, okay, so that scene kind of reminded me of the Mercy Thompson scene where she fights the little Fay otter in a freaking Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, no, I see. I see a correlation between the two. <laughs> Oh my god, but, yeah, but it no, seems so it funny. Was, <laughs> it was weird. It was wild. I was like, this is why is nobody walking over here? Like, mm -hmm. I know you turned the cameras off with your magic or whatever, but it's Costco. People walk around with their carts <laughs> loading up on shit. Like, you're not hiding in the back. I don't know what Costco they've been at, but at the crack of dawn, when they open at 930 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. that place is off the chain. Mm -hmm. It's not a few random people in there. It's, it's packed. Like, a thousand people in there. Yeah. <laughs> Costco is packed constantly, 24-7. Open to yeah, close. So, 
even like right if you walk in right when they open 20 mm-hmm. other people are walking in with you mm-hmm. so there is no way you would have been in an aisle with one person and mm-hmm. if you know costco you can see through the racks yep so if a fight is happening i don't look like what the hell going on over yeah. there they're not right being the quiet <laughs> You can hear the screaming and the grunting and the yes. throwing yes. shit. The only thing that could have made that scene better, and I think if it were written last year, they could have added it. Mm-hmm. But had they were been in the correct aisle to grab a um a folding chair <laughs> and yes. knock the folding chair over the the creature, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. that would have been like the best. I would have laughed really hard at that one. Yes. But. But yeah, so I, I don't know. I got, I'm sorry I, I started us off on the wrong foot this year. I was no, so but guess hopeful. what? I was like, it's Alona Andrews. It's gonna be good. I'm. I want this. So I'm sorry. I feel like that means we can only go up from here. Yes. Yes, that is true. And I also feel like I have learned a hard lesson, like the last couple of years with taking authors' works that I currently like and trying mm-hmm. to read older works. Yes, It doesn't is... necessarily work. Mm-mm. They have grown yeah. a lot. And I can mm-hmm. appreciate their newer books a lot more <laughs> after reading this. And even though I'm giving them leeway, I'm like, yeah, y- you were baby authors. You were yeah. baby authors when you wrote this. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's take a quick break. <laughs> I feel like I have shit on this for the first 30 minutes so we can take a break. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Okay, guys, check out these commercials by listening to those you are supporting the podcast. And don't forget to pick out the book review journal available right now on Amazon. I know you want to pick one up to kick off your 2024 properly by journaling all of your books. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Stay with us. We'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by the Shelf Addiction Merch Store. Check out all the bookish t-shirts, notebooks, mugs, and more. Don't miss out on these original designs, perfect for any book nerd. Support the podcast and visit shelfaddiction.com forward slash merch and pick up your next favorite bookish item. All right, welcome back, guys. We shall continue our conversation on, what's the name of this book again? Clean, clean sweep. sweep also that title trash yeah i ugh. yeah i get it because okay so i get it she because has the broom, the broom. Mm-hmm. i get it meh trash she's also trying to make the broom a character like the walking like stick the walking stick is a mm-hmm. character but the walking stick is much cooler than the broom <laughs> yes yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a weird <laughs> book. <laughs> it's interesting and it's creative, but it's weird. It's a hodgepodge of things. Yeah. It's like yeah. it wants to be urban fantasy, but it also wants to be sci-fi with space. And there's portal travel like I, I don't even know what to call it you're walking through doors into different parts of the universe um so that was interesting but then you're fighting aliens in costco at the same time so <laughs> yeah and then like the whole okay so i feel like we needed yeah we got the lay of the land pretty much but mm-hmm. i would have loved to dig more into like the werewolf situation mm-hmm. And yeah, Sean got this like biotech thing that seeped into his body. Okay. I kind of want some more on that. That would have been more interesting than him just kind of, again, the grunting and groaning as oh this thing God. enters his body. He's like, uh, <laughs> I, I almost skipped that part because I was like, what? I, <laughs> nobody can walk in right now <laughs> because you don't know what is happening. <laughs> You think one thing's happening, but it's not. It's not. Can I just say <laughs> that was a lot more sexual than when they kissed. When they kissed, yeah. I wanted to throw up. That was disgusting. Like <laughs> they had this weird seventies porn music going on, and they were like <laughs> slurping. I was like, this is disgusting. <laughs> the slurping. The I was sl- like, they were slurping. First off. 
anybody who kisses with that kind of slurping is nasty. Oh, no, God. Thank you. Uh, there's that's like too buckets much. of saliva everywhere. That's oh. too much. No. But what are you slurping for? <laughs> that, if someone, <laughs> I swear to God, if someone kissed me and it was a slurp, I'd be like, okay, okay. stop. No, enough. No, no. Stop right no. now. <laughs> stop you, you lose right everything. Now. And it was both of them. Like, both of the actors were making that noise. And I was like, Ew. are you actually kissing each other right now? Or are you just pretending to, like, kiss the microphone? Because either way, it's disgusting. <laughs> it sounds like a bunch of teenagers trying to figure out how to kiss. Yeah. I'm like, what is that? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That was gross. <laughs> it was so gross. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. So, I mean, between, I'm telling you, all the different times of the grunts and the... Uh, and the kissing, slurping. Oh my god, just too Mm-mm. many awful choices. <laughs> awful no, choices. no. I would have rather had the grunting at the kiss part, but like, oh, oh my no. god, no. Oh, I can't. <sighs> but um, yeah, I felt like there was an opportunity to learn more about Sean. I felt like we got the, like I said, the authors gave us what we needed to know. But I would have rather. I don't know. Again, here I go trying to rewrite someone's book. I don't know. I just would have rather had more of that. Mm-hmm. And even the vampire. Like, he, that was interesting how, like, these vampires are, like, almost like security. I don't know. They're, like, um, I don't know how to describe them. They're, it's strange. Like, very nobility feeling and houses and... Yeah promises and rules and i don't know it's very strange very much like we rule this world and this is what we're gonna do and it was like Mm. it's like somebody watched an episode of star trek and said i want to mix this with twilight Mm -hmm. and somehow Mm -hmm. this came out of it Mm -hmm. it does seem like that doesn't it that's like actually really good um comparison because you know it felt really young like how mm-hmm. old is how old is dina supposed to be they didn't give a specific age but she said sean evans is 28 and she was like three or four years younger than him okay so let's just say 25 so even if she's 25 i don't know just something about her read really young to me she was really young and it it just but she's also trying to be older at the same time because she's like, I went mm-hmm. off to college, then my parents disappeared, and then I went around the universe and mm-hmm. for years, and then I came back here, and now I'm in Texas for a few years, so I'm like old and I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. But also, yeah, she. There was another part where she's like, I'm only a few years older than that girl in high school, mm-hmm. but I've done so much it would turn her hair white. And I was like, but have you? You don't sound like it, ma'am. You don't sound like it. Yeah, like Mm-mm. you. Her character was not fleshed out well enough. No, not to make me care about her or feel sympathy for her or nothing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I felt like, oh, yeah, that sucks. Your parents disappeared. We got a little blurb about her brother not wanting to be an innkeeper, but it's like. And then her I sister's don't know. married and gone on a different planet. And like, who cares? Yeah, she's like, just gone. Like, do you talk to her? Do you send messages? Is she okay? Mm-hmm. Why does she not want to come home? Mm-hmm. We needed more. Mm-hmm. We needed a lot more. Yeah. And I know, again, like you said, this was like a fun little side project for mm-hmm. them. So maybe they didn't feel the need to get into the nitty gritty like they would in a normal book. But for that case, I feel like we should have known like or given some warning that this is like if you're not a hardcore fan you wouldn't mm-hmm. have known this was on their website and written yes. this way and, I, and that hurts them i think because a lot of people like if you go onto goodreads and amazon and look at the one and two stars people didn't like it they didn't mm-hmm. like it I don't know. They should have presented this like as like a mini something. I don't I don't know how you could present this in a way that people will know that this is not a full fledged book. It's mm-hmm. not all the things that we normally do in a mm-hmm. book. This is like a mini book or a I don't know. Something a passion project. Yeah. A fun creative project in between 
Kate Daniels and everything else they're doing. Like it was it was good, but it it needed so much more. And I mm-hmm. feel like if they had the right editor, if they had really worked on this more than just like let me post something on the blog for a friday like if they had actually done more to it it would have been so good and even you know like if they published this 10 years ago put it together and then the graphic audio was approached them and was like hey we're interested in this they should have like gone okay now's our chance to redo this Mm -hmm. now's our chance to flesh it out and fix it and make it better instead of leaving it as is Mm-hmm. Because as is, is not good. No, honestly. <clears throat> and for, I guess it's so lucky that I was pulled toward that Hidden Legacy mm-hmm. series. Because first, mm-hmm. because if this had been my first taste of Alona Andrews, I'd have been like, hell to the no. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, this is no. not for me. It would have been very hard to get me to read something else if this was my first interaction. Yeah. So for those of you that this is your first interaction, erase it. Erase (laughs) this completely. (laughs) Just don't even think about it. And then give the Hidden Legacy Mm -hmm. books a try. Yeah, um, I like these so much even better. better than the Kate Daniels because I mm-hmm. I tried the Kate Daniels and there was nothing wrong with the first book. I just wasn't engaged enough to keep going. The but first I book was those. the first book they ever wrote together. The first Kate okay. Daniels book that was book number one of all time, and they mm-hmm. have grown a lot since then. And they even you know if you talk to them about their Kate Daniels series, they're like, "Thank you for sticking with us as we learned how to write the first three books." So mm-hmm. they they are the first people to admit that like the early Kate Daniels books are not their best work because they were still so new to writing, and that's fair. And it is fair. That's fair. <clears throat> but I have no desire to get through books two and three to get to the good stuff. That's okay. So I recommend start with Hidden Legacy. That's yes. my personal two yes. cents. I gravitated toward Nevada and I just loved it. I'm yes. like, it's that such a first good series. book was wild. It was so good. I think that's one of my favorite books of all time. Burn for me it, like that. Yeah. Yes. It was so wild. Because, yes, I am here um, for it. Even what's his face when he kidnapped her. I'm like, <laughs> I know, I kidnapped her. And then he can't break her. (laughs) Oh my God. The hilarity of like the two of them. I mean, I love it. It's so good. It's so good. So, um, yeah, if you hear us and you're like, dang, they hate her. They, no, we don't like, we We don't love Alona Andrews. We we did the whole trilogy on the podcast (laughs) a few years ago, which is why I was like, yes, Alona Andrews graphic novel. Let's do it. (laughs) Yes. Actually, I'll link those older episodes in the show notes. So you guys can go back and listen to those if you want, because we had a great time with it. Oh yeah. And so this was utter disappointment to me Mm -hmm. and a horrible way to kick off the year I i'm so sorry I, I started this like literally i think it was like january one oh, or damn. something and i'm like oh <laughs> you should have been more vocal and been like casey no we're not doing this but look i didn't want to <laughs> look i didn't want to start the new year with like casey look here um yeah no <laughs> it's okay <laughs> It's okay at this point. You know, we've been doing this podcast for what, seven years now? You could say, Casey, no. I'm like, maybe it's just me. Maybe. And then I kept listening. I'm like, no, 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 it's not. It was not just me. The choices they made were just weird. Yeah. Like, it was just weird. It was weird. And I don't know the ending. So the ending, um, one little quirky thing that I think uh, the vampire, uh, what's his name again? Ar- Arland. 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 Yeah. He kind of was like walking away with Sean and Dina's kind of watching them on her cameras. <laughs> and they're saying to themselves, like, you know, so what's your intention here? Like, what's going on? Do you like her or what, basically? And the vampire was like, so, you know, after I do some research, you know, the vampire always wins in these three, <laughs> three way things. The vampire always gets the girl. And he like, mm. <laughs> they go their separate ways. So I'm like, OK, so this is a real lay it out option version of, you know, mm-hmm. 
the whole who who gets the girl three way love thing, but I'm like, mm, yeah. So there's only one author who has ever done love triangles in a way that I both love, respect, and hate her all at the same time, and that's Cynthia St. Aubin. She does the best love triangles. I cannot stand love triangles anywhere else, but when she does it, I'm like, I both love you, I hate you, and I respect you because you're doing it right. And I Okay, so what's so unique about her way of doing them? So she does it in a way where the character truly loves both men individually for who they are and is genuinely torn between both men. It's not like, oh my god, he's tall, dark, and handsome, and here's the blonde guy, which should I choose? It's, here's this man who does X, Y, Z, this is why I like him, this is why I respect him, we have this chemistry, this is our solid relationship. But over Mm -hmm. here, here's a different man who's totally opposite, and we have chemistry too, and it's different, but I kind of think about him at the same time, but you consume me at the same time. Like, it's very... It's very fleshed out and it's very each man feels like an active choice and like she could go either way. Wow. And so, yes, Cynthia St. Aubin, (laughs) when she does it, you're like, damn. But it's like here, you know, Sean Evans kisses her and she's like, oh, my God, I'm so into this. Am I into this? I don't know. But then the uh, vampire is like, can I court you? And she's like, ew, no, I don't like vampires. And you're like, this is not a love triangle. He's just interested he's just, and he smiles yeah. good or whatever. Oh, God. <laughs> like, this doesn't feel like a real love triangle. This is she wants the werewolf. The vampire wants her. You know, like, you know what? And I, hate to, and I hate to do another comparison to the Mercy Thompson series. Mm-hmm. But this is how I felt about the whole Stefan slash, you know, Adam Adam slash thing. Like, Stephen, Samuel. you're never, you're not, a, you're not really a choice. You're not, you don't uh-huh. really have a shot, sir. Yes. Like, yeah, you're cool. She likes you as a friend. But yeah. You don't really have, have a, a choice. chance. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Not a real chance. It's just you being delusional. You wish Mm -hmm. it were, but you really don't have one. And I feel like that's kind of what's happening here as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which is why I'm like, ugh, love triangles. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. It's not going to be good. Again, Cynthia. Cynthia does it. And I'm like, God damn this woman. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Because, like, the love triangle thing is so overrated. And I've said before, Oh, yeah. I like I like it when we can have two characters that maybe struggle to get together mm-hmm. and have a lot of external things keeping them apart or even internal things. But it doesn't have to be a third person. Yes. I feel like the third person is always like it never really sits right. And you you have an exception there, but I've not yeah. really seen one where I just really believed it. And like, what makes this chick so great? Like, why does everybody and their mother love her? I that's another like trope that I mm-hmm. kind of hate mm-hmm. when it seems like this person is perfect and everyone just wants them, but you can't really figure out why everyone wants them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what's so great about Dina? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, she doesn't really have a strong personality she's Mm -mm. just very determined and determination is not a personality trait i mean it can be but it's not really like she's not not a reason to love someone yeah or to chase someone like yeah no i don't know maybe they're just attracted to a competent woman because she like owns her own business and is competent and they don't, I don't know. see women. I don't know. It was, yeah. That's weird. It needed to be fleshed out. We needed, mm-hmm. like, at least another hundred pages of, like, just story building and world building and fleshing out characters and detail. And, yeah. Yeah, we need it, like, to buy into this, you know, I guess this three-way love situation. Yeah. We needed the triangle. We needed more scenes with her and Ireland. We needed some connection between them that we didn't really get at all. I mean, at least with Sean, like he did rescue her when she was like thought she was dying in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but other than that, 
I guess. Whatever. <laughs> All right. I'm ready to rate it if you are. I think I'm ready. Would you like me to go first or do yes, you want to go first? You go first. Okay. So when I first finished it, I really was torn on which way to go. It was either going to be a one or a two. Mm hmm. And at first, I wanted to give it a two because it's Alona Andrew. So I kind of wanted to just say, okay, it wasn't that bad. But it was that bad to me. It mm-hmm. was. So I'm sorry. Out the gate, first rating of 2024 is a one star. Oh, no. I'm so sorry. I haven't <laughs> given a one star in years. I know. You wouldn't even one give Nora star. Roberts a one star. <laughs> one star. There was nothing. Like, even though I had a couple of chuckles. A lot of it, I was cringing, like, mm-hmm. oh, God, like the moans and the groans uh-huh. and the, the slurping and the, uh, and the water and everything else. And then this, like, I don't know, something I just did not connect with Dina at all. And I felt like I needed to connect with her uh-huh. to make everything else passable. And I didn't connect with her at all. Yeah. The cutest thing was the Shih Tzu. Yeah. Beast. So Sorry. One star out of five. Your turn. <laughs> I'm a lot nicer than you. <laughs> um, I I give the audiobook itself three stars. There were some weird choices, but again, like as my first graphic audiobook, I was I'm intrigued by the all the different voices and some of the background noises. Like every once in a while, they would have like bugs or insects in the background i was like oh that's like an interesting because it's nighttime and she's out walking the streets like interesting Mm -hmm. definitely not the best but i am i'm ready to take the leap with you and find a better one Mm -hmm. the story itself i was going to give three and a half but since we don't give half stars i'm going to round down to three it was good it's alona andrews and so it's definitely like Lona Andrews buffering three stars. Not the yeah. best, but I yeah, am intrigued I enough know. to read the next book just to see if it gets any better. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm done. That's Tapped fair. Out. That's and fair. actually, it's funny that you said you were surprised I rated it lower than Nora Roberts. Yeah. I too am surprised, but I think I had such dread when starting that audiobook. Oh that god. Yeah. I'm like, oh god, I have to finish this. Help me, somebody, please. <laughs> That's how I felt. No. And I hate that. I hate yeah. it for myself. And um sorry, not sorry. I'm just being honest. That's you're always honest on the podcast and we can appreciate yeah. that. And so. in real life too. I'm honest <laughs> yes. all the time to be fair. <laughs> we love that about you. It's okay. <laughs> So, yeah. So, I guess we'll come back again sometime this year with another graphic audio. You get to we'll pick. Give it a cu- we'll give it a rest <laughs> for a while and we'll come back with something I pick and we'll see how it goes. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully, I can pick a winner. I feel like I'm going to do some research. I'm yes. going to do some deep dives. I might even listen to some of it. Yes. First l- you before. listen to the samples. <laughs> hmm. Because I want. To- a winner. Yes. A winner. It's a yes. part of my goal this year is to have a lot more wins than losses. And yes. I'm not talking like last year, we talked about this in our mm-hmm. year wrap up. I had so many mineral of the road books, like mm-hmm. in general, I had a ton of threes. Like my average for the year was like three point something oh, damn. across all my reading. Yeah. Was three point something and not a high. It was like 3.2 or something like that. So I didn't, I haven't had a really, really solid, good stride of really enjoyable books in a long time. So my goal is to work a little harder to take less chances Mm -hmm. and find things that I know I'll actually like. And in turn, hopefully you'll actually like them too. (laughs) Fingers crossed. (laughs) Yeah. Less chances this year. I I want more dependability, more wins. Okay. We got this. So that's what my goal is. (laughs) Well, we'll do it. Yeah, we'll see what what can be done. Um, all right, I guess we're done here. What do you think, Casey? I think we're done. All right. Yeah. 
It's been a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Way to start off the new year. Ooh, yay! yay! I know, y'all. So if you've read or listened to the audiobook or graphic audio of Clean Sweep, and you'd like to share your two cents with us and let me know, hey, Tamara, you're on some bullshit. I don't know why you li- didn't like that. <laughs> or, you know, hey, I agree with you. Or, you know, Casey, you got some good points. Whatever you want to share with us, we're mm-hmm. open to it. So please reach out. We'll be back next next year. <laughs> We'll be back next (laughs) month with another book chat. And actually, we're going to decide in the after show what that book chat will consist of. So if you're curious to see how we come up with that, it's available right now on the Spreaker app, audio only or on Patreon with video. Until next time, we'll see you later. Happy reading. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, please head over to Apple Podcasts or Spotify and leave a positive five-star review. It's a simple action that makes a big difference. You can also like this episode on your favorite podcast player or share it with your fellow bookworm friends on social media. Joining the Shelf Addiction Patreon family is another way to support us. For as little as $2 a month, you can help our team create even more amazing bookish content. If Patreon isn't your thing, Consider becoming a supporter on the Spreaker app for just $5 a month and gain access to exclusive audio-only content. You can find me everywhere, including Instagram, X, and TikTok under the handle Shelf Addiction. Join our book club of the same name on the book club's website and app where we discuss all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. Thanks for tuning in.